do you ever wake up and you're just tired of the things that you do every single day the same stuff that was me today <laughs> just a, tired of the same house stuff and yeah okay I thought I would try to shoot the video this way because I find my fun front <laughs> my front facing camera sometimes has better colors and quality than um, the one I use where you see my face. So I've received some needle binders. Some of these were a gift. These right here were the sock monkeys were from Brenda's Minders and More. And she also sent that fox with my name on it. And then there's another one. That sock monkey right there. This one. Yeah, she sent that one. Um, and I also had ordered one from Denkai Designs, and this was the free one that she sent. Hello Kitty. Love that one. But yeah, so we're going to go... Oh, wait a minute. And Brenda sent this one too. This star one. I like that one. Reminds me of a mermaid. But yeah, we're going gonna, gonna to try to move this really slowly. We're going to head out into my dining room because I have all of my stuff out there that I want to show you today. See all that pile of stuff? Okay, let me... First off is my progress on Nora Corbett's Peony Pixie. This is stitched on 28 count Lugana in Effervescent from Fiberlicious. I got this done all yesterday. I had off work yesterday, so I did this part. I've been working on this side one color at a time. So yeah, I think I, that's pretty good progress for one day. When I get done this side, I'm then gonna fill in the wings because that's all chronic. Here's the needle minder I had ordered from Denkai Designs. I just, that just caught my eye, I really liked it. So I have some fabric. Now that's the only stitching I've done since I've seen you last, which has almost been, it's been two weeks. My floss tube anniversary was actually yesterday, Monday, July 17th. That was one year that I've been on floss tube. So that's pretty cool, I guess. But yeah, let me move that out of the way. But yeah, I have some, first let me show this so it's out of the line of vision. My friend Pat, who is such a wonderful person, she gave this to me on Tuesday when I met them for stitching and dinner for my birthday. This is the Rosewood Manor Autumn Quakers, and this is the Valdani Thread Pack. I was, take, I was really floored when she gave this to me. I love this. I will definitely stitch this. Um, and there's even a fabric in here that I'm going to show you that I think may be really perfect for it. So there's that. And then Friday, I had my chemo appointment. And I went, afterwards, I went to my mom's and spent the day with her and my sister. And we went to Walmart because she had to return something. And I bought one of those mermaid books. Have you ever seen the pillows? Well, okay, it's not, it's shimmering because it's the reflection of my fan. That's not, doesn't shimmer in real life. But if you go down, it becomes all pink. And then if you go back up, it's gold. I played with that thing for like 10 minutes and then the inside is just, you know, regular. This is only like $4.50 or something and the back is like fuzzy. It's like, you see it's got lint on it. Yeah, it's like fuzzy. So I really just, my sister got one of course. She got one that was teal and it was like more like mermaid tail colors, but I really like the pink. So yeah, love that. But okay, books. We'll do books first. Well, you know what? No. We'll do fabric. Why not? Because you guys all, whoops, my finger's right in the line of the camera. Okay, this is part of my stash from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. All of the fabric I'm going to show you today is 28 Count Lugana. This is Kaleidoscope, and this is really a beautiful fabric. Let me try to get closer here in some spots where it's got like golds and greens and purples and blues. Really, really pretty. 
not that we fold. And this is Daybreak. Really love this one too. Pinks and blues and yeah, 28 Count Lugana is like my favorite fabric now. Totally love that. This is Discord. I think this would be a great fabric for a mermaid. Blues, purples. Yeah, I really love that. Now this is the one, this is Melody. This is one of my favorite fabrics from her. I have a couple pieces of this. I think this might be good for Autumn Quakers. Let me see if I can pull it without knocking all my stuff over. I think that might look good on that. Although some of those colors might blend in. I don't know. I'll figure it out when I go to do it. Okay, now the next fabrics I'm going to show you are the rest of my stash from Fiberlicious. She has quickly become my favorite fabric designer. Her fabrics are amazing. As you see the effervescent that I'm stitching the peony pixie on. This first one I'm going to show you, I literally just about died when I took, when I opened it out of the package. Look at that fabric. It is called Sunrise, and I actually think I'm going to stitch Renaissance Mermaid on this. I This fabric is beautiful. I, I'm just, I mean, look at the purple. And the purple is actually, yeah, it looks like a sunrise, right? Oh my God, I love this fabric. Love it, love it, love it. So I gotta try to fold this up so... This one, I ordered another piece of effervescent and I just got it in the mail because I wanted to be able to stitch like a bigger project on it. I just, this fabric, I love her ombre fabrics. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Just, oh my God, really? Yeah. This one is Mermaid's Grotto. This is pretty much, because you know I ordered Lugana and it takes the dye different. It's going to be more muted. This is pretty much just a, almost a solid piece of like aqua fabric. Still pretty though. Actually, what I thought would look really good on this was Gypsy Queen from Mirabilia. Because, and my fingers in the thing. <laughs> Gypsy Queen from Mirabilia because she has a lot of colors in her dress. So you kind of don't want to compete with that, right? Now this is the Fabric of the Month. I joined her Fabric of the Month Club. This is called Waiting for You. This is really pretty. Blues, creams, purples. Yeah, really love that. Love them all. This one's gorgeous too. Jewels of Atlantis, look at that. Yeah. Really, really pretty. Those were the fat quarters. Now this is the 13 by 18. These are, this is blew me away. And like I said, some of these are more muted than they would be on linen because of it being on Lugana and even weave takes the dye different. This is Coco Rose, where it's like a lavender pink tan. This is Lavender Mist, pretty purple. And then finally, this is one of my favorite. You know me in color. Starburst. Love this one. Oh my God, yes. I was actually thinking of stitching the Nora Corbett Autumn Fairy on this. I don't know though. Okay. I'm going to show you the rest or another huge chunk of my Mirabilia pattern stash. I have quite a bit, obviously. Well, first I'm going to show you, I only have two lavender and lace patterns because I, there was a time when I bought them, I stitched them. Yeah, I know, hard to believe. This is the Peace Angel. And someone a long, long time ago had done a conversion of her hair and made it look really, really pretty, like a whole bunch more hair. And I was trying to look and find that and I couldn't find it. But I've always loved that one. And then this was one of my favorite ones too. The World Peace Angel. Always love that. This is a giant one. This is 
Yeah, 249 by 270. So yeah, you do the math on that one. Okay, I received a lovely limit. I received a gift in the mail this past week, but I'm gonna skip that for a second. This is Christmas Elegance. I've always loved this one. Never stitched it. And it calls for like some braid or cord or something. I might, yeah, if you see on the back, that Nordic gold, yeah, I don't know about that. But man, that's a lot of thread, look at that. But yeah, gorgeous, I've seen that stitched. You know, I should just stack these up. That would just be easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, so there's Christmas Elegance. August Peridot Fairy, oh, of course. I have always loved this one. Started to stitch it at one point last summer and then scrapped it. I think it was because I didn't really love the fabric it was on. But I have some choices, don't I, in fabric. Red, and I got the bead pack for this when I got it. So there's the treasures and all the beads. Seriously love that one too. Oh my God. And a bunch of you have stitched it. The Raven Queen, and I have the bead pack for it. Again, another one that may have to stitch that come Halloween. That would probably look good on that effervescent fabric, wouldn't it? But you know what? There's a fabric I actually ordered from Stephanie that I haven't received. It's called Secret. This would probably be perfect for it because this fabric looks gray. What's the fabric they call for? They call for touch of gray linen, yeah. The, the, her secret fabric is like a gray with white and like spots of pink. It's really gorgeous and amazing. So this may be perfect for that one. You know, I, I love this one too. I forget what it's called. I think it's Xenia. Yes, it is, Xenia. I love her smaller ones. They're just so quick to stitch and just gorgeous. I mean, look at that, please. Why am I not, why have I not stitched that one yet? Or this one. This is, I wanna say Ava. I don't know if I'm right. I'm right! Yeah, it's not a test, people. This is Buttercup, I wanna say. Yes, I've always just, like I said, I love the, I have more Nora Corbett than I do Mirabilia, I think. I don't know, but Buttercup, This is Tulip. Now the only thing that bugs me on these is there's no face. I'll probably put like a lines, like their eyes are closed and a little mouth. I did that for my Wisteria Pixie. I put a face on her. I just can't do it with no face. But these are so much more gorgeous stitched in person with the beads and everything. These pictures do not even come close to doing them justice. This is Fairy Spring Fling. Yes. Always love this one. She sort of has a face. I would put a mouth on her. Love this one too. That would go good with my summer fairy one that I did. This is another one that I really, really love. Lilac. Yeah, totally love that. The greens. And it's actually not white. It's like yellow, like on the inside of the flowers. Hard to say. Uh, blossom, I think. No, it's Orchid. I was wrong on that one. This one is Orchid. Really, really pretty. They're all pretty. Poppy, which is an older one. This is Snapdragon. This is a newer one that she did. And I'm really anxious to see the models stitched for the two newest ones that were just released on Saturday because the models really show the stitching good. So I'm looking forward to seeing that at some point. Okay, these next couple were a gift. Let me pull them out. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pull them out, and I'm going to show you those in a minute. because. And Petal Fairy, which I've always loved this one, and I don't know why I haven't stitched it yet. And I have the beads on the back. She only calls for two beads. And then this one. This one is the Bella Vita. The reason why I'm showing this one, I think I showed it before. I saw, I joined the Mirabilia conversion board on Facebook, which is, man, that's a great resource if you wanna change colors. 
because it seems like the Nora Corbett mermaids that she does recently have just been using the same color palette. So I'm all for changing colors. I have the DMC card and all that. Someone changed this where this is like it done in electric blues and this is like golds and tans. It looked gorgeous. So I asked her for her conversion and she put it on there. So I'll be definitely be stitching that one like that. And she even did something different up here with the beads and stuff. So, okay. Now I had done a post on Facebook stitch mania last week, I think last week or the week before about Lady of the Flag. I don't know why I don't learn my lesson about posting on Stitch Mania that, that isn't like a works in progress picture. Um, I had seen on uh, Facebook, you know what, I'll just have you look at this while I talk for a minute. This is the gifts, the gifts that I received. Some One person sent me all of these. So I had put a post I done a screenshot because I was searching for Lady of the Flag and someone was trying to sell one for 500 I think one was like 325 or 300 another one was a pretty high price now when I posted that on Stitch Mania it was in the morning before I started work and you know, the couple of comments were like, yeah, I agree. That really is too much. Cause I was like, seriously, like that's a whole lot of money for an out of print pattern, $500. Well, then I worked for a couple of hours. When I came back to the post, there was almost 200 comments on it and it had gotten somewhat nasty. Someone said, uh, why do you care what people charge for patterns? It's like um, if I bought a house, I wouldn't sell it for the same price that I bought it. First of all, let's face it. When you buy a house, most people, you invest in it. You change things in it. You, like my husband and I, we built that shed. We have a hot tub. Um, we have all new appliances in our house from a couple years ago. Things that you do that increase the value of the, pa of the house. No comparison with a cross stitch pattern. That person hasn't done anything to that pattern. They've kept it in good condition. They haven't marked on it, but they haven't done anything to increase the value. The only reason the value was increased was because it's now out of print. And then someone else actually said, I was mad because I couldn't afford to buy it. First of all, they don't know my situation. If I really wanted to buy a $500 pattern, I think I could, but who wants to do that? That's crazy. So before it got really out of hand and the admins would be deleting it anyway because people were starting to argue, which <sighs> people, I deleted the whole post, all of it, and thought, how do I never learn? I've learned now I will not be posting anything like that on Stitch Mania ever again. Um, and I've actually had, you know, I don't know why this bothers me. And I wasn't going to say anything. I've posted a couple pictures, progress pictures of Peony Pixie on Facebook. And I've had a couple people comment that it looks like lungs. And then right when someone posts that, someone below them will be like, oh my God, I'm so glad you were the one to say it. Really? I don't know why that bothers me, but I guess I'm going to take a page from Deborah Fassler. I watched her video last night can't say anything nice if you can't say oh it just it looks good or whatever don't say anything really I, yeah I don't know why that bugs me but it does um, anyway okay so I posted that on stitch mania and I also posted this the lady the flag the picture on Instagram someone contacted me on Instagram Linda and she's like, I have Lady of the Flag. I'll give it to you. I'm like, you actually have Lady of the Flag, the, the pattern. She's like, yeah, but it's just missing the front cover photo. Okay. So she was like, I also have some other memorabilia that I'll send you because I'll never stitch them. This is the pile, people. 
She sent me the Easter Fairy kit, which I've never had bought any of these kits. Now, I won't use that linen, but it has all the threads and the beads and the crinic. Yeah. This is Lady of the Flag. Wait a minute. I'm going to show you so you can see the name. I don't know why it doesn't show the name on it. It is the pattern, however. Maybe it was the way it was folded limit. Oh, it's because I had it the wrong way. Yeah, see? So suck on that, people. No, I'm teasing. Yeah. Now, she had written on it in pencil. I don't care about that. I'll erase that. Yeah. So, got me one of them. And then she sent me Gypsy Queen, which I didn't have. That's why I said this would probably look really awesome on that one fabric, that Mermaid's Grotto, because this has so many colors in it, and that fabric is pretty solid. I love this. Love this one, the colors in it. She also sent me Damask Roses. Yeah, this is an old one, too. Love that one. And then she sent me Autumn Queen. I don't have any of the queens. Love the colors in that one. Yeah, so that's all my cross-stitch stuff that I have and wanted to show you. I next wanted to talk, the last thing I wanted to talk about was books. I finished Final Girls. Now, the premise of this book is, 10 years ago, college student Quincy Carpenter went on vacation with five friends and came back alone, the only survivor of a horror movie scale massacre. In an instant, she became a member of a club no one wants to belong to, a group of similar survivors known in the press as the Final Girls. Lisa, who lost nine sorority sisters to a college dropout's knife. Sam, who went up against the sack man during her shift at the Nightlight Inn. And now Quincy, who ran bleeding through the woods to escape Pine Cottage and the man she refers to only as him. The three girls are all attempting to put their nightmares behind them and with that, one another. Despite the media's attempts, they never meet. Okay, basically, this, this is pretty long. Well, actually, it says, Now Quincy is doing well, maybe even great, thanks to her Xanax prescription. She has a caring, almost fiancé Jeff, a popular baking blog, a beautiful apartment, and a therapeutic presence in Coop, the police officer who saved her life all those years ago. Her memory won't even allow her to recall the events of that night that passes in the past. That is, until Lisa, the first final girl, is found dead in her bathtub, wrist slit, and Sam, the second, appears on Quincy's doorstep. Blowing through Quincy's life like a whirlwind, Sam seems intent on making Quincy relieve the past, with increasingly dire consequences, all of which makes Quincy question why Sam is really seeking her out. And when new details about Lisa's death come to light, Quincy's life becomes a race against time as she tries to unravel Sam's truths from her lies evade the police and hungry reporters, and most crucially, remember what really happened at Pine Cottage before what was started 10 years ago is finished. This book was awesome. It was one of the best books I've read this year. I stayed up late Monday night reading it. I was up to like one in the morning reading it. And I just started it. It just came out. It just came out. When did I buy it? The 13th. I bought it the day it came out. So I finished it in like five days, four days. Yeah. Highly recommend if you like thriller, suspense. Yeah. Okay. So now since I've done that book, the next one in line is going to be this one. I actually had to buy the paperback because it wasn't available on Kindle. It's called The One by John Mars. It says, have you met your match? Now here's the premise. One simple mouth swab is all it takes. A quick DNA test to find your perfect partner, the one you're genetically made for. A decade after scientists discover everyone has a gene they share with just one other person, millions have taken the test, desperate to find true love. Now, five more people meet their match, but even soulmates have secrets, and some are more shocking and deadlier than others. And if you look at the inside cover... The inside cover is like an ad for the website. I mean, look at that. It tells you match your DNA. Thank you for choosing. It's like the website, like you went to it. Sign up here, 
receive our free DNA test kit. If you don't currently have a match, do not worry. Thousands of new customers join each week and 98% of matches are identified within six months of registering. Can you imagine if this was like actually true? But yeah, I can't wait. I haven't started reading it. So looking forward to that. But that's it. I hope you guys have all had a great two weeks and are stitching all the things and doing all the things. I'll see you next time. Bye.